Ladies and gentlemen, in this episode of the G-Shock Watcher, we're going to do a little bit of review. I don't normally do reviews, but I recently managed to pick up the G-Shock Gravity Master. This is the grb 300 a 2 and I want to give you my thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Matthew Hardman, a G-Shock Watcher. Thank you so much for joining me. It is a Saturday afternoon here in Singapore. Haven't done a video for a while. I've been on the road. I was uh, lucky enough to be in Hawaii in the US recently. Um, and then my most recent trip was in India. I was in uh, Mumbai, Delhi and Bangalore for a, a work trip. It was amazing. And I wanted to give this particular watch a run. Now, this watch we're talking about is uh, the Gravity Master, the GRB300-8A2. I had to look at the website to be able to see that. Um, picked up this watch on the way back from the US. Now, this watch on Singapore pricing was around about $439 Sing. The price I managed to pick it up on duty free was around about three hundred and thirty, so saved about a hundred dollars. So, you know, couldn't say no to a bargain on this particular one. So I went ahead and actually got a hold of it, um, and thought that while I went to India, I'll make it my daily driver and see how it goes. Now, the shortness of it is I probably wouldn't recommend this as a watch. It kind of feels a little bit cheap. Uh, I know it's not from a tech point of view. But in comparison to many of the other watches which I've picked up from G-Shock, it's not really up there. But you know what? Let's let's take a look at this watch a little bit closer and get an understanding of what it is and what it's trying to achieve. And, and maybe I'll summarize with some final thoughts, even though I've probably given those to you already. Okay, so... This is the watch, the Gravity Master, uh, the GA, sorry, the GRB300-8A2. Um, never the most easiest names to remember. But as I said, there were different versions. One was kind of like a black with a orangey red. One was a black and silver with some red highlights. This one was the gray and blue and kind of a green tinge it's a bit hard to sort of see but you can sort of see the tough solar uh, it's a little bit different from the uh, the other colors but i thought this one was a much more striking watch so you can see the date down the bottom here where is it down there the date of the uh, the time but apart from that not too much else the bottom Complication, I guess, is the world time. Currently, it's set at the same one, so both are actually in Singapore. And then at the top, it's uh, it's kind of the functions. Now, this particular watch, of course, has those features that we love. So they have things like the Tough Solar, uh, which is a important thing. So Tough Solar there to be able to recharge the watch. Shock resistant. It's a carbon core guard watch. Uh, I think it has it here on the back. Um, but it also has Bluetooth, which is important. So if we go and uh, sit the watch up like that, see if it stays. If I come over, bring in the phone, and we'll just unlock that and put that in. So there's our watch. So we're going to go connect to the watch itself. So we'll hold this down. And we should get the connection. And there we go. We can actually see the actual watch there. And, uh, you know, one of the great features if you travel is obviously world time. So recently I was in uh, Delhi. So we can go ahead and actually choose that as a time and send that to the watch. And you will see whoop. <laughs> the watch actually go ahead and change its time. So you can see some of the motions there. So, you know, the time here is still set to Singapore time, but the world time down the bottom 
is set to that deli time. And I can go through here and switch them around. Uh, now, of course, you can do this with the watch. You can actually do one of the buttons. Simplest thing to do here is to do the switch. So if we click this to send the settings, you can see this actually changing. So it'll wind itself forward to get to the actual deli time, which will take a little bit longer because deli is about two and a half hours uh, behind Singapore time. So it'll cycle through all of those different things. Certainly when we go from Delhi to Singapore time, it should be a lot simpler. But having the Bluetooth capability that enables you to set the times fairly easily makes things very, very easy. You know, So being able to go through to world time and selecting what that world time should actually look like makes things fairly simple. Uh, if I go back and let's change it again. So we'll switch it back so you can see Current display is Delhi, which is the time we have here. And the world time is Singapore, which is down below. I want to switch them over. I click that and you'll see that time cycling through. It'll be a shorter time on the top. It'll go forward. But what's interesting is the one on the lower one goes backwards. So the main watch goes forwards. Even though it would be shorter to go backwards, it always goes forwards. The bottom one can go backwards or forwards based on where it's actually closest to. So having the Bluetooth capability certainly makes the watch very, very simple to go ahead and actually use. Now, outside of that, the watch does have the main sort of capability. So you can set timers. You'll use the bottom down here for a timer. Um, it does have the, uh, the time synchronization which is always sort of useful as well. Um, the challenges I find with this particular watch is it just it just doesn't feel, I don't know, am I getting snobbish on watches? I'm not too sure. But it doesn't have that, that feel that it's a G-Shock. Maybe it does. I mean, it's, it's resilient, it's strong, it's able to do things fairly uh, well. It tells the time. We're not trying to confuse anything here. Um, it's got some nice sort of feature complications as it goes through and animates. But the thing which I found about it, which was annoying, it just felt a bit cheap. And I think it could be because of the band itself. The band was um, maybe the sizing. I do have smaller wrists, you know, so if I take off one of our modded watches here, and put this particular one on, um, it wasn't necessarily the best of fits. It took me a while to get it to a point where I felt comfortable with it. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of band here. Uh, you know, it's not terrible looking, but it just, maybe it's the gray. Like that could be the thing. Maybe it's that gray plasticky feel, which makes it feel a little bit cheaper than other watches. But when I've spoken to people about the Gravity Masters, they do appreciate the previous model of Gravity Masters more than these current models. Um, they feel a little bit more solid. But look, it's not a bad watch. It's solid. It'll probably take a beating. It probably just doesn't really match up with something you might actually wear on a daily basis. Um, so, you know, that's kind of it. Very basic sort of review. It's really based on the feel, which, you know, I didn't think it felt really, really great. It felt fairly rigid. Like that band is very, very tough and maybe it's meant to be. Um, the grey maybe gives it a bit more cheapness. Perhaps if it was the darker one with the red, it might look a little bit better. But it has those capabilities of multiple time zones or dual time zones. You can alter that on the particular watch. So you can do the... Uh, the bit where you wind out the, if I can do it, you know, wind out the actual side of the watch to do it manually. But let's be absolutely honest, uh, it's a lot simpler to use the, uh, the Bluetooth capability on your phone to be able to actually uh, navigate this particular thing. So you can see the, uh, the time zone sort of changing on the watches there at the bottom. So 
So there you have it. That's the, the Gravity Master. Uh, we'll keep it around, but it may not be the daily driver that I thought it might be. So there you have it, the Gravity Master GRB308A2, the grey on blue model. Bit hard to get the focus, but certainly you've seen that on the uh, on the video already. Um, yeah, nice nice watch. Had promise, but really probably isn't going to be one which will uh, uh, be a daily drive in terms of wear. It's it's unique, but uh, there are better watches in the G-Shock range. So. Thank you so much for joining me on this Saturday afternoon. I hope you enjoy your weekend and having fun with your own G-Shocks. And I look forward to seeing you very soon in the next video. Please like and subscribe. It helps out. Thank you.